Hi brothers and sisters, this is Scarlett and it's so nice to see you today. I hope all of you have a nice day. Today dear all, I know that all of us are waiting for our Lord Jesus to come back. Am I right? As we can see, so many prophecies from the Bible that has been fulfilled. Are you wondering about what's happening now in the whole world? Brothers and sisters, all of us want to welcome the coming of our Savior, our Lord Jesus. So let's ponder this one question. How should we welcome the Lord when He comes knocking at the door? Yes, brothers and sisters, how should we welcome the Lord when He comes knocking at the door? The Lord Jesus told us, Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 But when the Lord comes, how will he knock at the door? When the Lord knocks, what should we do to welcome Him? This is something that everyone who believes in the Lord should ponder deeply. Let's think back to the late age of law, when people were in danger of being condemned and put to death by the law because they could not keep it. And God, in order to redeem mankind, incarnated as flesh as Lord Jesus and came to save people on earth in prison. The Lord Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17 At that time, many Jewish people witnessed the miracles performed by the Lord Jesus. They also noticed the authority and power in the word of the Lord such that the Lord Jesus was able to feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. With a single word, the Lord Jesus was also able to calm the wind and the sea, as well as to cause Lazarus to emerge from his tomb after being dead for four days. Whatever the Lord Jesus spoke was accomplished and fulfilled. And this allows us to see the authority and power in the Lord's word. The words the Lord Jesus used to teach people and the words he used to rebuke the Pharisees were the truths and were the words we human beings are capable of uttering. The words spoken by the Lord Jesus and the things he did reveal the disposition of God and what God has and is. They manifested the authority and power of God and caused men's hearts to quake. It may be said that Jewish people at that time had already heard the sound of the Lord knocking. But how did it treat the Lord? We all know that the Jewish priests, scribes, and Pharisees at that time, knew clearly that the words spoken by the Lord Jesus and the miracles He performed all came from God, but they did not at all have hearts that revered God. They did not seek or investigate the work of the Lord Jesus, but instead just clung blindly to the words of the biblical prophecies, believing that the one who was to come would be called Emmanuel or Messiah, and would be born of a virgin. When they saw that Mary had a husband, they concluded that the Lord Jesus was not the immaculate conception of the Holy Spirit, and that he was not born of a virgin. They also made arbitrary judgments and said that the Lord Jesus was the son of a carpenter and was just a completely ordinary person. They used these judgments 
to deny and condemn the Lord Jesus. They even went as far as to blaspheme against the Lord Jesus and say that he relied on Belzebub, the ruler of the demons, to cast out demons. In the end, they colluded with the Roman government to crucify him. Most cherished people believe that the Lord Jesus should have been born in a palace and that he would be their king and would lead them to throw of human of the uh, Roman rule. When the Pharisees were spreading rumors and slander and condemning the Lord Jesus, they were just being blindly obedient without any discernment at all. Between the salvation of the Lord Jesus and the slanderous words said by the Pharisees, they chose to listen to the false hosts and outright lies of the Pharisees and rejected the we preached by the Lord Jesus. When the Lord knocked on their door, they closed their hearts off to the Lord. It was just as the Lord Jesus said. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax close, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should help them. Matthew chapter 13 verses 14 to 15 Because they refused to listen to the Lord's voice, and did not accept the Lord's work of redemption, this Jewish people missed their chance to follow the Lord Jesus. As a result of resisting God, they met with God's punishment, leading to two millennia of national subjugation for Israel. They contrast, in contrast, the disciples who followed the Lord Jesus at that time, such as Peter, John, James, and Nathaniel, had hearts that loved the truth. They did not rely on their own notions and imaginations in how they treated the word and the work of the Lord Jesus, but so conscientiously, studied them carefully and obtained the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. They hear the voice of God and recognize that the Lord Jesus was the Messiah to come, and thus they keep pace with the footsteps of the Lord and receive His salvation. We can see that the failure of the Pharisees and the Jewish people lay in the fact that they only relied on the literal meaning of the biblical prophecies to understand and recognize the manifestation and work of God. This led them to be people who believe in God but resisted God. From this, we can see that if people who believe in God treat God's new work on the basis of their own notions and imaginations, not only will they not be able to welcome God's arrival, but will also very easily become people who believe in God and yet resist Him. How lamentable would that be? The Lord Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they though which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 to 6. We can see here that we can only welcome the Lord's return if we can be like such people as Peter and John, have hearts that thirst and crave for righteousness when we hear the Lord's voice and actively seek and investigate it. Today, the prophecies of the Lord's second coming in the last days 
have fundamentally been fulfilled. When the Lord comes again in the last days, we must be more vigilant and prepared. Take heed of God's voice and have hearts that seek and thirst for righteousness to await the Lord's knocking at our door, which could come at any time. Only in this way, we can welcome the second coming of the Lord. The Lord Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truths from John chapter 16 verses 12 to 13. And in chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation, it is prophesied many times that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We see in the Bible that when the Lord Jesus returns, he will express his word and do new work. This is the Lord knocking at our door. And it is the Lord using his word to knock on the doors of our hearts. All who hear the word spoken by the Lord by the Lord and actively seek and listen attentively to the voice of the Lord are the wise virgins. Once they recognize the Lord's voice, they are then able to welcome the return of the Lord and accept the watering and supply of the Word of God. This fulfills the Word of God and also on the servants and on the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit from Jewel chapter 2 verse 29. The Lord is faithful and he will surely allow all those who yearn for and seek him to hear his voice in this time. However, God's wisdom is difficult for us humans to fathom. And the way the Lord will knock at the door when he returns will not be as it seems in our notions and imaginations it could be someone calling, the Lord has returned to us. Just as the Lord Jesus warned us. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Matthew chapter 25 verse 6 We may also hear God's voice from the churches that spread the gospel of the Lord's return, or from the internet, from the radio, Facebook, or elsewhere, and see God speaking to all churches. Still, no matter what way the Lord knocks on our door, we absolutely must not treat the Lord knocking at our door like the Jewish people did. We must not decline to seek or investigate His knocking based on our notions and imaginations much less blindly listen to and believe lies and rumors. By doing so, we would be rejecting the Lord's call and would miss our chance to welcome the Lord and be raised up into the heavenly kingdom. It is prophesied in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 The Lord Jesus says, Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 Brothers and sisters, this is the end of our sharing. I hope that you gained a lot of enlightenment today. And I am inviting everyone for our international fellowship. Please leave your comment here and I hope we can draw near to God at all times. Thank you so much for listening.